I bet you have your own home lab server where you run various applications. Media solutions like Plex or MB, uh, MinIO for S3 object storage, uh, your backup uh, to backup devices on your network, Pi-hole for ad blocking, Home Assistant for home automation, uh, Grafana, Prometheus, and Loki for application monitoring, maybe a Unify controller to manage your Wi-Fi network, a code repository like GitLab, a private Docker registry, Jenkins for CI/CD, maybe a WordPress CMS, uh, and many other useful apps. I bet it works great and you can easily access it while at home. But how about accessing your applications remotely while you are on the go? Or how about exposing your applications so others can use them? This is a piece of cake if you host them in cloud. However, when hosting from your bedroom or basement, not so much. Don't worry, uh, Cloudflare got you covered. Their zero trust service has a great free tier option that lets you access your web server securely from anywhere. You don't need to have a static public IP. Let me show you how it works and how to set it up. My name is Philip. Let's dive right in. First thing first, we need to provision a web application. It can be any web application you like. For this demo, I will use NetData. It's designed to monitor the health and performance of our computer systems, containers, and other applications. It provides a real-time insight into your system activity. Nowadays, the most popular way to deploy an application is by using containers. You can either go with Kubernetes, for example, a fantastic lightweight Kubernetes flavor K3S, or you can go with plain Docker. For this demo, I will use Docker for simplicity. Although, my recommendation is to go with Kubernetes in your own home lab. I have a tiny single board computer powered by an 8-core ARM64 CPU that has 8 gig of RAM and 250 gig of NVMe storage. It's ideal for edge computing. Our node has internet access. However, it's not accessible from the internet. It has only private IP as it's sitting behind a NAT. That's a very common scenario. Our node is running Docker. Uh, because we'll be running multiple containers, I will use Docker Compose. Docker Compose allows you to define all your containers uh, in a single YAML file so you can start them all at once as a stack. Let's start by creating our Docker Compose configuration. All right, uh, let's set up a network for our Docker containers. This will allow them to chat with each other easily just by using their container names. Instead of the default network, let's create a custom one and call it external network for better clarity. We'll then attach each container that we create to that network. Now, let's define our net data service. I will copy paste the sample Docker Compose configuration from their web page. Let's keep those volumes in the current directory. By default, the container is attached to the host network. Let's remove it from the host network and attach it to our external network. Finally, let's expose NetData GUI that's listening on port 19999 uh, to the outside world. Okay, we have our NetData container defined in the Docker Compose YAML file. It's time to start our application. To do that, we'll run Docker Compose app uh, that will build and start all the containers defined in our configuration file. Dash D indicates we want to start them in detached mode. We can check if our container is running by executing Docker Compose PS command. Okay, the data container is up. Let's try accessing it from within our private network. 
everything is looking good. Uh, next thing we'll do is add a reverse proxy to the mix. This will act as a single entry point to all our applications. In other words, you can have multiple domains pointing to the same IP. Once someone connects to a particular domain, reverse proxy will extract the domain name from the request and forward the traffic to respective application. As a reverse proxy, we'll use Nginx Proxy Manager. What it is is basically Nginx bundled with Let's Encrypt for SSL and a nice GUI. Let's copy the Docker Compose definition for the Nginx Proxy Manager from their documentation. I will rename the service to Nginx. Uh, let's name our container Nginx as well and attach it to our external network. Finally, let's start our reverse proxy with Docker Compose app. Only the Nginx container was created. NetData container is already running. I will log into the Nginx proxy manager GUI that's listening on port 81. We'll find the default login and password in the documentation. Once we log in, it will ask us to immediately change the login credentials. Let's do that. Okay, we are in. Uh, I will create a proxy host. This is basically a rule that tells Nginx how to route traffic. You need to specify a fully qualified domain name that you'll be using to access the service. Our domain name will be NetData Linux Cloud Hacks OVH. So when someone connects to the domain, the proxy will redirect the traffic to NetData service on port 19999. Mind that because we are using a custom network, we can call the container by name. Here's our service name. In a typical use case, uh, where a reverse proxy is exposed to the internet by port forwarding, I would request a SSL certificate, but we'll defer SSL termination to Cloudflare. We won't be exposing that proxy to the internet directly. Okay, our proxy host is ready. Before we test how the reverse proxy works, we need three things. First, we need to register to Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a company that routes a very substantial amount of global internet traffic. On their website, they mention handling 55 million HTTP requests per second and 70 million DNS queries per second. Please select a free plan from application services category. Uh, this will give you a DNS, CDN, SSL certificate and more. Please also sign up for Zero Trust uh, free plan. Uh, this will give us uh, a VPN tunnel ability. Next, we need a domain. Our is uh, Linux Cloud Hacks of EH. Lastly, the domain DNS needs to be managed by Cloudflare. How to buy a domain and how to transfer management of DNS servers to Cloudflare are described in detail in this video. Let me log into Cloudflare admin panel and select our domain. Then go to DNS. Uh, for the time being, I will add NetData Linux Cloud Hacks OVH domain to point to our 192.168.10.230 IP. The DNS entry is there. Uh, this trick is just to test if the reverse proxy is working from within our network. For obvious reasons, it won't work for anyone else. Let's try accessing the reverse proxy via the DNS name. Works. Uh, now let me remove the DNS entry. Next step is to create a secure tunnel between our Docker network and Cloudflare infrastructure. Mind that the tunnel is initiated by our server, so we don't need a static public IP, nor we don't need to forward any ports on our router or firewall. 
will then use that tunnel to receive traffic from Cloudflare. First, let's go to Zero Trust menu, then let's click Add Tunnel. We'll select Cloudflare D as the tunnel type and click Next. We'll name the tunnel Lab and uh, click Next. Here we have details to set up Cloudflare connector on various operating systems. I will select Docker. Next step is to set up a Docker container with Cloudflare connector. I have a predefined Docker Compose configuration. Only thing that is missing is the tunnel token. You can get it from this command. Finally, let's bring the Cloudflare connector container up with Docker Compose app. OK, the container started. Here, under the connectors, we see a new connector with connected status. This indicates that our container is now connected to Cloudflare infrastructure. Let's click Next. Here you define a frontend. It's like a reverse proxy, but on the Cloudflare side. It will terminate the connections from the clients and then proxy it via the tunnel to our Nginx. Let's select uh, Linux Cloud Hacks domain. I will put NetData as the subdomain. Basically, we want netdata.linuxcloudhacks.ovh to be our public hostname. Down below, we specify the protocol type of the backend. Our Nginx proxy manager is accepting HTTP connections. We could set it up to listen for HTTPS to have end-to-end -end encryption, but the tunnel is encrypted anyway, so we don't have to do it necessarily. If you are interested how to do end-to-end -end encryption, let me know in the comments. As the target, I will provide the Nginx container. Mind that because Cloudflare container and Nginx container are in the same custom network, they can reach each other via the service name. Finally, let's save the configuration. OK, our tunnel is operational. If we look at the DNS for our domain, uh, we discover that NetData CNAME has been created pointing to our tunnel. Now, the final test. Let's access our application. Works. Only thing pending is forcing the access via HTTPS only, as at the moment it's HTTP, so it's not encrypted. Let's go to SSL TLS and select Edge Certificates and tick Always Use HTTPS flag. Now, if we try accessing the application via HTTP, it will automatically redirect it to HTTPS. And that's how you set up a Cloudflare tunnel. Now it's your turn. What internal applications are you itching to access from anywhere? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions about the process, don't hesitate to ask. Also, if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing for more content on making your developer life easier.